Alright, in this video I'm going to be recording solutions for Cal BC homework 1.1 and this is just the homework on definition of a limit. So this first one, I'm going to give you the graph of a function h of x and we're going to just start asking some questions. All right. h of 1 is the value of h where x is equal to 1 so it's actually, you know, we're seeing a filled in circle here, that's going to be 1. h of 0 is going to be the height of the graph right over here. That's also going to be 1. The limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of h of x. Okay, So as x is approaching 1 from the negative side, what's happening? Okay, Well, h of x is getting closer and closer to 3. I right? said in class that the uh, approaching from the negative side is approaching from the left. Okay? So as x approaches 1 from the left, h of x is approaching 3. So we say that the limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side of h of x is equal to 3. And so in the same way, they're going to ask us about the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive side. And on that one, we're going to say, okay, well, from the right, or the positive side, we're getting closer and closer to y equals 0. So I'm going to say that the limit of h is 0. And then as a result, because these two don't agree, I'm going to say that this one fails to exist because of disagreement in one-sided limits. Now, and then they're going to ask us the same questions about the graph of h as x approaches 0. Okay. Now, as, h, as x approaches 0 from the negative side, okay, I'm going up like here, right? Okay, and y, the y value is getting closer and closer to 1. I'm going to see the same thing as x approaches 0 from the positive side. Which means that the limit of h as x approaches 0 is 1. And you may be thinking this is like a really uh, boring situation and maybe you even realize why. You see that because the function is continuous through that point, uh, it's all, everything's the same, right? All 1's. And what you'll see, I believe, um, two lessons from now, is that that's actually kind of our condition for continuity, is that the limit of the function equals what you would expect it to in some sense. But we'll talk about that more in a couple times from now. All right. Let's move on to this graph g of x. And I think this one's going to have a little more excitement going on. Um, maybe I'll move a little faster through it. As I approach negative 1 from the negative side, I am approaching y equals 2. As I approach a negative 1 from the positive side, uh, y is approaching negative 1. Right? Because g of x represents the y coordinate. And... Therefore, since these two disagree, I'm going to say that this one fails to exist because of one-sided limits disagreeing. Now, on this particular homework, it did not say find the value of the limit or give a reason why it fails to exist. But that could be something I might ask you on a quiz, right? Like, tell me why this limit fails to exist. And right now, you know, we're looking at pictures of graphs. You know, I think pretty much all we're going to see is either disagreement in one-sided limits or possibly, um, you know, uh, infinite discontinuity, like a vertical asymptote. Um, but that'll be pretty obvious to see in a picture of a graph, right? Especially something you can know, just draw by hand. You'll really be able to see a, a vertical asymptote. So. Um, yeah, you know, I think you'll know when to say infinite discontinuity, right? When you see the vertical asymptote. But g of negative one, that's where the circle's filled in, that's gonna be negative one. Okay. Right? The limit of g not, need not necessarily exist in order for g to exist at a point, right? And we actually saw that up here, right? The limit as x approached one of h didn't exist, but h of one did exist. Okay. Uh, it could just as easily uh, if that dot just wasn't there, right? And then, yeah, you can't see that, but if I covered it up like that. If that's just not there, then h of 1 fails to exist. Oh, limit as x approaches 2 from the negative side of g of x. All right. Approaching 2 from the negative side is 1. Approaching 2 from the positive side, also 1. 
meaning that the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is equal to 1, right? because from both sides we're approaching the same value. Okay. But g of 2, right? this is something different from the limit of g as x approaches 2. g of 2 is where I'm seeing the actual filled-in circle, and that's looking like x equals 3. Okay. And then again, talking more about continuity, when we'll get to a place where when we see that the limit of a function exists but is not equal to the value of the function at that same x value, that's what we would call a removable discontinuity because it just looks like we've removed one point from the graph. Okay, but we'll have more to say about that. Okay, approaching three from the negative side. Okay, we're approaching zero from the negative and positive side, and g of three is zero. The limit is zero then because it's continuous. Through. All right, let's see what we got in the back. Oh, all right. I know this graph. Um, I think I used to use this graph for the quiz over this lesson. I ordered the right quiz. Goodness, how about I didn't order this again? All right. So as we approach 1 from the negative side, y is approaching 1. As we approach 1 from the positive side, f is also approaching 1. And since these exist in degree, we're going to say that's 1. Okay, as we're approaching negative 5, absolutely what? as we are approaching negative 5 from the negative side, okay, we're approaching y equaling 3. Uh, but as we approach from the positive side, we're going to see down here, that's going to be 1. And then this is going to fail to exist. All right. The limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. That one, here's x equals 2. That one's not going to exist. Because from the positive side, we're approaching negative 3. And from the negative side, we're approaching positive 2. Oh, well, my face has gone off camera, but I think that's going to be all right. Uh, One-sided limits disagree. OK, and then OK. Uh, from the negative side, we're approaching 2. And from the positive side, we're approaching negative 3. OK f of 1 is equaling negative 1, f of 2 is, oh, we have to do some square counting, 2, 4, 6, 8. And then f of negative 5 is this one right here that's looking like 3. Oh, OK, for what values of c between negative 7 and 7, does the limit as x approaches c of f of x not exist? Well, let's, um, I mean, I, you'll see which of these I list that are, you know, inside that interval negative 7 to 7. But I think I'm going to not just restrict myself to that. Uh, I think I'm going to go all the way back, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, we'll just say from negative 10 to All right. And so first thing I see is right here, a vertical asymptote. Okay, so the limit is not going to exist there, right? Because from the negative side, approaching negative 8. As x approaches negative 8 from the negative side, we're going towards positive infinity. And we haven't really talked about that, but I think you understand what I'm saying. And as we approach negative 8 from the positive side, we're headed towards negative infinity. Okay. Again, we've not really said what we meant by that, but you understand. Okay. Since positive infinity and negative infinity are not the same thing, I think we can say that that limit doesn't exist. And I already showed you that, you know, at a vertical asymptote, we're going to say that the limit fails to exist because of an infinite discontinuity. So I've got x equals negative 8. And I might also say um, right here. All right, here we've got a vertical asymptote. Uh, they're together around it, but they are, you know, clearly both going to infinity. 
And so I'm going to say x equals 8 also. These, um, the limit doesn't exist because of an infinite discontinuity. Or you could call it a vertical asymptote if you wanted. Right. And then there's probably going to be some others where they, the limit fails to exist because of a non-removable discontinuity, right? Like a jump discontinuity like that, or you know, you just like here. Okay, so that's going to be quite a few things. I'm going to say negative six, negative five. Where else? This one, x equals negative two. Okay, before I move on, what about x equals one? Right. Is that a place where the limit fails to exist? So we've got a discontinuity. And we go back here, no, no, that limit exists in equals one. And we're just asking not where the function is discontinuous, but where the limit fails to exist. Okay. And so that's that's not exactly the same thing. And again, you know, more discussion on continuity later. Okay. Negative five, negative two, positive two, and what looks like six also. and x equals 6. This is limit fails to exist because of the one-sided limits disagreeing. All right. And then the last thing I've got here is, oh, okay, some kind of the properties of limits, the linearity of limits. And this is, man, we should all be so lucky as to see one of these questions on our AP exam. Um, you know, it's just like it's going to work exactly the way you think. Okay, so what is the value of the limit as x approaches 5 of 3 f of x minus g of x? Really, what we're kind of implicitly saying is we're taking the limit of this whole kind of quantity. So what I'm going to say, I mean, you probably are not going to write this out, right? You're going to say it's 3 times 1 minus negative 2, so maybe like 5. Right? Um, but for me, I will, um, I'll write this out using the properties so you can see what I'm doing here, in case you're not seeing what I'm doing. All right, so this is equal to 3. 3 times the limit as x approaches 5 of f of x minus the limit as x approaches 5 of g of x. Okay, that's the linearity of limits, provided that these limits exist in the first place, but statement of the question, we just said they did. So this is going to be equal to 3 times the limit of f is 1 minus the limit of g is negative 2. Okay, so that's going to be 5. Or you could stop there and say it's 3 times 1 minus negative 2. That's cool, too. All right. And then this last one, okay, this is kind of a thinker. Um, and I think I'm not going to direct the question. Um, or I'm not going to definitively answer the question, maybe is what I'll say. Um, f of negative x as x approaches 5. Is that, is that limit guaranteed to equal 3, or is it not? Okay. Um, because I could see, on one hand, you thinking, oh, okay, this is going to be 3 minus 2 times negative 2, so that would be 7, right? Or you could say it doesn't exist because of that negative x, and you're not sure that that's how that works. Hold on, I'm getting a, getting a phone call. Um, but that can wait, for sure. Um, so I just want you to think about uh, the same thing. And I don't remember, maybe, I, I know I have something about this, uh, you know, kind of passing a certain function th through to the inside of a limit. Uh, or the inside of a composition in the lesson notes. And I don't know if I've already hit that. Um, if I have, then you'll, you'll know the answer. But this is something I want you to think about. Okay? And if you're not sure, you know, ask me at the beginning of class next time.